All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and what a week it's been. What a week it's been. Today, I mostly want to just go through and examine the charts. I've got a few tabs to show you first, a couple of things I felt were worth mentioning. So we'll get straight into this. Look, Amazon, Apple, and Alphabet all missed earnings, okay? Um, but here was just sort of a standard template for Friday. So Apple earnings recap, they missed revenue, EPS miss, EBIT miss, iPhone revenue miss, wearable revenue miss, sales down in every geography. But the stock market doesn't care, okay? Apple share price doesn't care, it's up 4%. <laughs> so so I think it might be time to see us some melt up. Now, that does not mean that that is by any means guaranteed. I'm sure that we will see some weakness into early next week because I think everything is, at least in the short term, a little bit overstretched. Here's a nice illustration for you. Look, I wonder when earnings will matter. And I had a quite a lot of criticism going back a couple of months ago. People saying, yeah, well, your melt up can't happen because earnings, this, that, the other. But the facts are the facts. Okay, earnings just do not matter. They haven't mattered for a long time. They keep falling, but the stock market doesn't care. So maybe at some point they will matter, but they certainly don't seem to matter at the moment. The US unemployment rate fell to 3.4% versus 3.5% expected. So everything is not as bad as it seems. Um, the labor market is still quite strong. I think there's a bunch of factors contributing to the strength we're seeing in the equity markets. And to make matters even more interesting, we've got the US CPI data coming up in about 10 days on the 14th of February. So we'll be looking ahead to CPI. Could month over month data increase? I think possibly, but year over year, I expect it to still be coming down. The reason I say the month over month could increase is because things like rent and shelter and lumber are all kind of, um, they've all been in increased demand. The prices have been showing increases. And I wonder if that could skew the CPI data on a month over month basis. There's always the chance, of course, that they decide to omit those data points from the CPI basket um, in order to, you know, make the number seem smaller than it really is. It's a difficult thing. And as my career has gone on, particularly since the sort of C19 era, I've noticed I've started to pay less and less attention to macro. And I was thinking about this on my dog walk this morning. We live in this strange world where you can't, you can be really good at macro, but the data is fake, right? They just, they just lie about these metrics. They just change and manipulate the way they calculate them. So it spits out a figure, which is closer to the one they want. How can you really, even if you're a wizard at macro, when you're being given false data points, how can you, how can you interpret the false data points to produce a, a truth? How can you be accurate when the data you're using to try to come up with accuracy is, is based on lies? So over time, I've kind of been slowly shifting away from caring about the macro. I just kind of try to focus on the charts and on the price. And that seems to be working so far. I want to quickly touch on Bitcoin before we get into some charts. Okay, 21% of American millennials hold Bitcoin. And you can pause your screen here if you want to check this out. And there are less than a million people who hold at least one Bitcoin in an address they control. Said another way, only 0.01% of the world holds one Bitcoin. Joe here makes the argument that we are absurdly early. But remember, there's a hard cap supply of 21 million Bitcoin. And the real world number is 17 million Bitcoin because about three have been lost forever in the early days. And a million is held by Satoshi and they can't really move that without revealing their identity. So it's not really surprising that very, very, very few people on this planet have actually managed to accumulate a whole Bitcoin or more. Similarly, did you know there are something like 54 million millionaires worldwide? Yeah, there you go. 56 million people worldwide are millionaires. So if all of those people decide they wanted a Bitcoin, there's, there's simply not enough. There's only 17 million. They can probably have around a third each. So it's not really surprising that such a small percentage of the world holds one Bitcoin. And over time, this is likely going to only go down. Over time, the distribution of Bitcoin wealth trends from concentrated in the hands of a few to being held by the many. Of course, this is completely the opposite to fiat. Over time, the rich get richer and the poor stay poor, right? And you can measure this with something called a Gini coefficient. I'm not going to go into this now. I've kind of got sidetracked. But if you want to go and look at the Gini coefficient, it measures the wealth distribution of Bitcoin over time. And what you will see is Bitcoin's Gini coefficient trends down over time, meaning the wealth is distributed from the hands of a few to more people over time, which is the complete opposite to the fiat currency system. So my point is, over time, this will only go down, not up. This week and perhaps last week, I've been talking a little bit about on this channel how India was talking about banning cryptocurrency and I was basically mocking them. I was saying that we, we see the same pattern over and over again. They people, Places, nations, countries, they threaten to ban Bitcoin. Then they either do a U-turn and they don't ban Bitcoin or they do ban it and then they come out 
months to years later and finally undo their ban. And the reason for this is you can't ban it. And history has shown if you do try to ban Bitcoin or Bitcoin mining, what happens is there's a small lull period where people figure out how to go under the radar. And then what you see is Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining thrive in those areas. And eventually the place that bans it in the first place decides, oh, we should probably we should probably embrace this and at least collect some tax money on it. And so because of this pattern that we see time and time and time again, when India came out and said that they were talking about thinking about banning Bitcoin, I just sort of openly mocked and ridiculed them and said, yeah, well, good luck with that. And already we can see here that they have pivoted on this idea. They are not going to ban Bitcoin. They're going to keep it legal in India. So happy days over there. Of course, they really have no choice. And even if they make it illegal, it really doesn't matter either. Has history has shown us time and time again. So before we get into some charts, I want to play you this clip from a few days ago. When did I put this out? Three, three or four days ago, 31st of January. So I'm going to play you this clip right now. I think there'll be some precious metals entries coming up in the near future. So I'm noticing lots of these YouTube influencers, lots of Twitter people, lots of uh, mainstream media coverage of, of precious metals and silver is now the time to buy. People are saying, oh, I've just bought a bunch of gold. And I don't like that, to be honest. I don't like that at all. The time to buy gold, if I hop into this chart, was of course all the way back down here okay we did well buying this breakout we flipped short here and then we got long again here so this was the time to buy gold all down in this neighborhood buying it up here just to me doesn't seem like the right call doesn't mean that we couldn't perhaps get some sort of technical you know something like that and we could draw a line and buy the breakout and target the top of this range i'm open to any possibility and any outcome but i always get wary when i see a bunch of people that don't really trade and don't post their positions and don't post their call outs ahead of time start to tell you i'm buying gold after this massive massive move like this is this in my opinion is not the time to be buying gold the time to be buying gold was down here and on this breakout here like we did live on the channel so if anyone's telling you to buy gold at the moment i would just i'd just be a bit wary of that and so it looks like it looks like experience there was no substitute for experience right it looks like there's no substitute for experience because whilst i was seeing all the influences here whilst we had no mainstream media coverage back here okay then we start to get up into this neighborhood and i was saying things like i'm seeing these calls for 3k gold and i said you know best case scenario we'll touch this and then we'll have this massive shakeout move it looks like we're not even going to make it up to here first it looks like we're going to already be putting in this correction so that's absolutely fine this is just, like I said, there's no substitute for experience in the markets. So we are stopped out at this position, of, uh, at this level here, this red line here. So I can get rid of that. We can get rid of this position. That means I currently have no precious metal exposures. I was worried that I might have got out of the miners too early, but this does indeed look to be breakdown, retest and resumption lower. So that's worked out as well. We got out of that with a bit of profit. Silver, again, you know, we rode this trend up here. We got out here and then I sat here for a while thinking, did I get out too early? Should I have maybe waited to see what happens? But as you can see, I, I almost got trapped up here and I didn't get trapped. So that was good. And now we do appear to be putting in this big sort of shakeout move lower. So again, whenever I see a bunch of influencers start to come out and say, is now the time to buy silver? I'm buying silver, I'm buying gold, you know, this, that, the other 3K gold targets. That is not the sort of thing I like to see if I'm going to be getting long the precious metals. So for now, I think we've, we've, we've handled these trades really well. I do think big opportunities come in in the near future. But first, I think we need to let the dust settle, find some, uh, some sort of cycle lows for gold and potentially some kind of falling wedge ball flag type pattern to set up. And then from there, we can look to attack the top of this range. And then I'm sure we'll come out with, you know, the, the mainstream media will come out with their narratives again. 3K gold on the table, those same influencers will be shilling you gold and silver and telling you they just bought a bunch of silver and all of this. And then, of course, from there, we'll probably get wrecked again. And that's the time where Camel will be loading up the truck. So for now... I think we've done really well capitalizing on this. I'm not looking to get too trigger happy, okay? Like the trades have been going really well. So the thing for me now is just not to give back my profit. So not going to be getting trigger happy, sitting on the side. I've got no FOMO, no nothing at this point. Just sort of waiting to see what happens. This could certainly bounce around from here and resolve higher. And if it does, that's fine. But there's no clear entry for me, at least for a while. So that's the precious metals handled. And I'm happy with that. Notice the dollar here, okay? looks to be breakout and looking to recover this now for a long time for a long long time i was wrong about the dollar because all the way from back here in this neighborhood i was saying it's due a counter trend bounce this is a massive move down and we just never got one then it looked like we were going to get a big counter trend bounce there and we didn't we got rejected now this time could be the same or it could be different at some point you know given the amount of downside we've had a kind of you know a decent counter trend bounce makes sense or at least a consolidation along this blue support line before we then roll over further to the downside so this is clearly putting pressure on the precious metals at the moment i don't think this is going to have too much of an impact on the 
crypto market or the, the equity markets but that of course remains to be seen so cautiously optimistic here about this i'm by no means suggesting this is just going to roll over and continue lower although that certainly could happen i'm telling you essentially i have no idea what's going to happen but for a long time i have been suspecting we get some kind of big counter trend bounce before we then break down at the least i would think we get a consolidation and a grind on this line before we come down but i have been saying that for a long time i was basically saying that for all of this and i was wrong about that so anyway it that remains to be seen nobody really knows but i would think given the amount of downside it would only make sense to get some kind of dead cat bounce from here and of course if that was to unfold then we will see the precious metals suffer even more yields still kind of going sideways so this is a big green candle but it doesn't really mean anything as of yet we are back above this red level so we'll see how that goes for the two year 10 year if it's going to continue wouldn't make perfect sense to touch this purple downward slope and resistance line before rolling over but i do expect it to roll over i don't think this is going to continue to be bid of course that remains to be seen anything can happen bitcoin no clear sign of a half cycle low almost feels like we're probably not going to get one maybe this red candle here was it as far as i can tell this is likely going to continue to push on and up towards 28 to 30k at least over the rest of this cycle so we'll see what happens with that for now long strong continue to push the same is true with pretty much all of the cryptocurrency so ethereum same sort of shape uh xrp is still going sideways matic still pushing up so happy days and uh zcash still pushing as well so that's fine hopping into the us equities things starting to get a little bit exciting here nothing really out of the ordinary i kind of said on thursday i expect to see maybe this gap close to wednesday's candle maybe even a touch of this orange trend line before we can continue higher i think you can see that quite clearly here from the nasdaq you know this was starting to go straight up wasn't it so even you know all the way back down to twelve thousand ish would would be absolutely fine more than expected for me to see some weakness over monday tuesday wednesday but i think this will resolve to the upside where we can start to put a line in the sand and say well maybe this trade is going to fail is if we break down from this orange upward sloping support line but all the while we're above that i have no problem holding this trade dow jones still kind of consolidating still kind of compressing inside of this range so not much to say about that the vix rather interestingly look well contained under this red line isn't it well contained under here absolutely no sign of a breakout for the vix just yet so again doesn't really speak to stock market weakness as far as i can tell the FTSE 100 looks to be resolving to the upside as you can see here we have indeed got a higher high so i would think this will continue to press up to the top of this sort of upward sloping red resistance line around 8500 it's probably put that like here then you'll know where i'm aiming in for all of the blockchain stocks are doing really well because of course bitcoin is doing really well so coinbase up in the 70s now and microstrategy as you can see 284 so that's great riot pushing up so I'd like to see that marathon as well kind of chopping around not doing a whole lot of anything but i think if you're not in here then another position could come from a break of this purple sloping downward sloping resistance line as you can see here but for me long and strong continue to push that's fine tesla as well still flying as you can see so tesla flying that's absolutely great to see we'll just continue to push that trade until we lose this upward sloping orange support line apple as i said right at the start of this video it just doesn't care does it It doesn't care about earnings no, no, nothing really matters anymore we live in this time of fake data and fake numbers and, and i'm not saying their numbers are fake because of course they're not but you can just see there's the market wants to go higher i think being bearish here is, is just a futile existence until we at least get some sort of trend line breaks so if you draw a trend line like this and then the price was to do something like this and break down then you i can start to see that maybe there's uh, you know maybe this rally is weak maybe this rally is not for real maybe it's going to form a big bear trap or uh, excuse me a big bull trap particularly if we start to come all the way down back to these sorts of levels and you know that would be true of the nasdaq as well if we were to do something like this and break down and then lose this green level then yeah fine i understand your bearish narrative but looking at the charts like this right what is the point in being bearish when despite earnings misses despite everything else that's going on all those bearish narratives fed talk all of that what is the point in being bearish when the market just keeps going up so anyway that's absolutely fine um one day at a time as ever oh i almost forgot um let's take a quick look at geo again not really much to say you already know the score looking for a breakout above this box probably gonna have to widen this a bit longer stops already moved up to here for geo xlc look xlc doing well as well so that's fine love to see that and we have had a request to do some uranium let's cover uranium real quick so we'll hop into this you can see we had this big sort of downward slope in red resistance line with a breakout retest resumption um this blue trend line is a bit abstract i'll give you that but you can see here it was kind of flipped into support then lost then it was resistance then it was resistance flip support and since then it's been support for a while 
You can see we've had a break of this bull flag with the downward slip and red resistance line and the same is true here. So is this the time to be long uranium? Quite possibly. Should this be looking for upside? Quite possibly. Your warning sign would be a breakdown of this blue line here. So if we were to lose that blue line and do something like this, then I would not want to be anywhere near any long trades for this. Also, this is how I'd want to play uranium if it was me. Now, full disclosure, I have no intention of taking this trade. I don't know en enough about uranium. But if I was going to play this trade, I'd be looking for this current trend to resume to the upside for the uranium miners. This is the sort of thing I'd be looking at. Of course, lose this red upward sloping support line and you wouldn't want to be anywhere near longs. Here's some stuff about all the, uh, the war narratives that are being pushed and maybe this is conducive to higher uranium prices. It's not my personal belief that war is ever a threat. I think the media wants everyone to think that that's a threat. I think they want the idea that nukes could be uh, could be let off any day now. I think they like the public living in that kind of fear, but I'm just not that sort of person. I, I don't really believe that, that, that anyone wants that. I believe most of these governments are pushing towards a one world government and a one world control system rather than this whole let's blow each other up kind of deal. I, also with like Russia and Ukraine, like Putin, Putin wants Ukraine, right? I don't think he wants to nuke it. I think he wants it for himself. I don't think he wants to make it uninhabitable. So, but what do I know, right? I'm just a camel on the internet. But for me, like I, I, I don't really see this going much higher unless potentially it's going to be used for nuclear power stations. With all that said, the charts don't lie. The charts have indeed broken out. So as long as this can continue its uptrend, something like this, then I think you can remain long and strong there. I certainly expect some weakness into next week. As I said, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they're all down days. But like I said, as long as we're above those upward sloping support lines, then I think the bull case is well and truly intact. I do think there's a big case for the precious metals. I do think that we will be able to get some nice entries on those soon enough. But I also think first, everyone that turned up late to the party, everyone that's talking about 3K gold a couple of weeks ago and buying a bunch of silver on YouTube and all this stuff. I think those people are... They just need to pay the price of showing up late and being, you know, not not real traders. And once these people have paid their price, then the real traders can step back in and bid the market. So I think there will certainly be opportunity on a much longer term time frame. If you're buying gold now and not intending or silver and not intending to sell it until 2027 and beyond, then I'm sure you'll be in profit. But, you know, if you want to maximize your uh, the bang for your buck, so to speak, then I certainly would think there's a bit of a dip and a bit of a pullback coming over the next couple of weeks for the metals before we can make that final leg up to the top of the range. So as ever, one day at a time, lots of patience, no emotions, no bias. We'll just uh, see what the market tells us to do. If you found value here today, I'd appreciate it if you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you want to continue to get updates on all these trades in real time for free. Hope you enjoy your weekend. And in the meantime, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.